Bowser is one of, if not the most famous video game villain of all time, but even with that, he's still not the true final boss of Super Mario Odyssey. When Mario Odyssey released in October of 2017, it felt like an event. Finally, a Mario game that represented a true return to the explorative nature of Mario 64 and Sunshine, and boy did it really lock in that direction. Featuring a narrative that's strung across multiple different kingdoms, each providing their own beautiful vistas. New enemies and set pieces that fully embrace the weird and wacky undertones of the game's entire design. And on top of all of this, countless moons scatter across each location that encourage a sense of curious exploration that feels almost childlike in its simplistic fun. So because of all these features, the encounters with Bowser really stuck out of place. Offering little challenge or an interesting use of the player's skill of the mechanics, these encounters quickly started to feel like chores, not boss battles. Now if you were to say that Mario games have never been about epic boss battles, but just creative and accessible platformers, I would agree with you. And for this reason, I think the game's final level of Darker Side is a better final boss in Odyssey. Seriously. And this isn't just because of the comparative difficulty of the two, although Darker Side is a much tougher experience, but rather in how they each encapsulate the game's themes and serve as effective and impactful conclusions to them. Playing through Bowser's fights in the game, it's easy to notice that something is missing in their design, specifically because of how important it plays out in the rest of the gameplay. Not once in any of the Bowser fights does the player use their hat throw, Odyssey's premier mechanic. The only actions required to beat this fight are running, jumping, and punching. That's it. Now, let me remind you that this is in a game where the hat throw is so important and versatile, the game forces you to look at a specific menu to teach all of its many different uses. In fact, the fight de-emphasizes the use of Cappy so much that it actually has you replace your hat to defeat Bowser in these encounters. It just seems out of place that in order to get to your final confrontation with Bowser, you use the capture ability infinitely more than you ever do against him. I'm a firm believer that bosses, especially final boss battles, can serve as a perfect culmination of everything the player has previously learned, providing a pseudo-narrative throughline that the player actually gets to experience through the gameplay. Darker Side, rather, puts this mechanic into a driving position and requires the player to master their use of Cappy to progress. Now while you have your obvious examples, such as the captures of your cabbage-looking uproot, the sentient lava bubbles, or the ridiculously adorable Pokios, this also manifests itself in the more subtle uses of your cap as a way of course correction. It's saving yourself from a jump, or even just allowing quicker movement, the level is designed to reward the player directly for understanding the mechanics taught for the past several hours of play. This is important, as the entirety of the game leading up to this point very much feels like building up a robust toolbox of different interactions and moves performed with Cappy, so Darker Side provides the perfect opportunity for players to finally show off. On top of this, the simple nature of Nintendo's gimmick-focused design philosophy is that the game design repeatedly and consistently relates back to how the player interacts interacts with this one central mechanic. So having any form of conclusion that does not prominently demonstrate this is a disservice to the prior level design, as well as the player's experiences from those earlier moments. Adding on to the lack of Cappy influence in the Bowser fight, this battle also doesn't feature much in the way of callbacks or references to earlier concepts and mechanics. One of the best things a final boss can do is mirror the situations and conflicts that the player had experienced in earlier play. This ultimately creates a better sense of theming and rewards the player for sticking with the game up to this point, as sort of a wink and nudge to something that they very clearly remember from earlier. If the only thing familiar about your boss fight is that I fought the exact same one on Cloud Kingdom, then you're missing out on so many of the wonderful and climactic opportunities that this fight could represent. Alternatively, the Darker Side level is able to become a love letter to the player for the time that they've spent with the game. Through the inclusion of earlier aspects such as the P-Switch decaying flower bridges, or the Metro Kingdom emphasized pole swing at the level's beginning, it effectively serves as a reminiscent look at the past mechanics, while still building upon them into a new area of challenge and difficulty, like a good boss battle should. In the end, these aren't simply there for nostalgia, but rather to show where the players come from and how they are able to deal with much more demanding situations from their experience playing the game. In addition, Darker Side includes a refreshing mix of the different musical tracks from prior stages to truly drive home the memory lane feel of going through the whole stage. From the jazzy perfection of Wooded Kingdom soundtrack to the subtle charm of Lost Kingdom, the level pushes the player to look back as they relive old obstacles in a new light. Lastly, Darker Side does a much better job at representing and creating an effective end to the player's emotional connection and relationship with the game's interactive story. Right in the build up to the challenge, the game knocks you flat on the floor with how much concentrated callback it throws at you. With Pauline's band playing you off with their 
rendition of Jump Up Superstars, you take on your first ever capture, the frog, to reach the entrance, the level's design sets the player up for a satisfying end to their journey. As mentioned earlier, the physical repeats of game design elements and mechanics emanate this throughout the entirety of the final challenge, until the player is met with one final note from the designers. A thank you for playing the game, a sign that you illuminate, which just further indicates how it's about you, the player, that caused this emotional connection. And as you reach the final island and scale Metro Kingdom's tallest skyscraper, again as a frog, Cappy thanks you for the journey that you two embarked on together. The impact of all of this, while it might seem sappy or weirdly sentimental for a game about just collecting coins with a sentient cap, provides a surprisingly heartfelt and sweet ending to an amazing journey. And that really is what all of these aspects of design point back to. The game is an epic journey, an odyssey even. Darker Side is able to challenge and then send off the player with a final taste of the game's themes, in a way that's just not seen at the end of any of the Bowser fights. For while beating Bowser might have been the end of Mario's story, Darker Side truly concludes the player's journey. So to finish up here, I think the main lesson that Darker Side can teach us is how a final challenge can exist without being just some tacked on fight. It's painfully common in Mario games to have the final Bowser confrontation feel completely detached from the rest of the game's mechanics. For example, in Sunshine's giant tub fight, all of the interesting water jet mechanics with Flood are replaced with what equates to just a glorified ground pound. But if Darker Side proves anything, it's that a game can end with a sad satisfying conclusion to its themes and ideas without feeling out of touch with the other 99% of the gameplay. So if the future Mario games were to take any note from this video, it'd be to let Bowser just play games with his son, and instead give these games a proper platforming send-off. Hey there, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Mario Odyssey was easily my favorite game of 2017, so getting to talk more about its design is just a complete joy to me, so I had a lot of fun working on this one. And hey, if you have any boss fights that you'd like me to break down in the future, then let me know in the comments below which boss fight you'd like to see me tackle. And if you want to see some more of my content, then you can click up in the top right to see another boss battle breakdown. This one's about how Splatoon's DJ Octavio serves as a final exam before you play the game's online multiplayer. And if you want a more comedic take on video game challenge, then you can click down in the bottom right to see me playing Mario Kart 8 blindfolded and having directions relayed to me over Discord. I had a blast with this one, so please go check it out. But with that, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it, and I will see you all next week with some more boss battle breakdown. You have a good one, alright?